Hey guys, Mega Mr. Van here, and this is the second video in the eight-part series Emerging Trends in Education. Today's video is solely dedicated to the Makerspace. I absolutely love Makerspaces, not just because it's a fun place to play with 3D printers and Arduinos and do all sorts of really cool stuff, but because it is a place that expands student creativity. See, the Makerspace is this multifaceted location that allows for construction of anything, really. Uh, cardboard, paper, actual wood, metal, you name it. There's 3D printing, sewing, basically anything with STEM. It's pretty much shop class, but awesome and accessible for students of all ages. But Jennifer Cooper from Edutopia says it best in her blog post, Makerspaces provide hands-on creative ways to encourage students to design, experiment, build, and invent as they deeply engage in science, engineering, and tinkering. And I couldn't agree more with that because the Makerspace is a safe place where students can learn through failure. They learn through trial and error and construction. This was built in kind of our crude Makerspace. We're working on BB-8, and this is one of the prototype designs for the internals. But this is all student-made. Duct tape, piece of wood, Lego tires, Arduino. It's pretty much awesome. But this is student creativity. They decided to go with a hamster wheel design. And this is what I want to talk about. The Makerspace has two ideas with it. Uh, people who are for it and people who are against it. Now, the people who are for it, uh, like myself, have honestly seen how it engages students in creativity and innovation. Uh, it teaches them to think through problems and collaboration. It teaches literally every 21st century learning skill that we, as educators, are supposed to be teaching. It teaches positive failure, uh, or fail forward, as my professor from Concordia always told me. And really, it's whatever you want to teach the kids in the makerspace. There is no set curriculum. There is no test that you have to teach to. And that's what's so freeing about the makerspace. Now, the people against the makerspace have an honest opinion here because it it's, can be seen if they don't understand what's happening as this waste of space. It can be done anywhere. Let's just buy you a cart, go outside, whatever, play with that. But instead, the makerspace really does need an actual location because locations help us create mindsets. Now, someone else who might be against the makerspace might say there's just not enough time in the day. And that's true. As educators, we are always looking for time. And unfortunately, we have those nagging tests over our head that we have to have our students take. We have to collect this data. We have to report grades. We have to do so many things. And a makerspace just seems like another add-on. Uh, another another problem that people might have, and I know I've received this complaint personally from other teachers, is it's too messy. Yeah, makerspaces are messy. You create messes while you're learning. I don't know anyone who has ever built a table or a chair not create a mess doing so. So it, it really depends on your personality. Do you believe that classrooms or schools need to be perfectly clean and crisp, and that's what we're presenting, having this nice facade, essentially, but uh, no, education is quite literally, in the makerspace, messy. Also, finally, the startup cost and continuing running costs of a makerspace. It's expensive to get a makerspace running. I'll just be honest with that. I mean, if you want a 3D printer, if you need all the materials that go with it, different uh, power tools, whatever you're doing, you need to spend money. And schools and administrators might see that and say, hey, we don't have the budget for this. So now it's up to either you to find the budget, uh, crowdfund it, or just drop it. And that is really sad, but it is one of those things that people can argue against the makerspace with. Now, the potential benefits of the makerspace aren't really potential benefits because they are incredible benefits. It helps teach a holistic STEM education. It sparks creativity, and most importantly, it's student-driven. Students are excited to be in the makerspace. They are excited to get in there to learn. Now, potential dangers, because we always have to look at that. You know, it's a lack of stuff. If you have a makerspace that doesn't have well-kept supplies, um, or 
you know, maybe you don't have everything you need to accomplish your goals, then it's going to be a hindrance. You're going to always be trying to overcome that. And then also lack of training is a big potential danger. It's essentially like creating a STEM lab and then saying, hey guys, here's a STEM lab. Go use it. Um, if you don't have any training with that, then how how do we expect any positive use or how it can be used correctly to get that student creativity, to spark it, um, or to have student-driven lessons in there? Hey, sources are in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.